what I'm going to do today is show you how I calculate the power of this coil gun and I'm going to answer some questions that some people asked first let's look at what we have to play with as far as the test lab goes we have two scopes we have a fluke and a hand tech and the fluke is going to show us the pulse of two coils because it's only two channels all we got and then the hand tech is on the chronograph so measuring the speed of the shot and then we have the fluke voltmeter to measure voltage okay so this is the yak this is what we're gonna play with today and we're gonna answer questions this is six coils it's 16 gauge wire it's eight layers and two inches long each coil and I designed it like that to shoot these Phillips bits because they're cheap readily available they're hardened they come with a point on it if you looked at my other videos you'll see that I fired this thing into a steel plate and you can't even tell it's any damage on this tip at all they're like virtually indestructible use them again if you find them alright so let's look at Ohm's law this is an easy way to do it this is called Ohm's apple alright because you can find any one of these if you know the other two so if you want to find the current you just cover that up with your hand and you divide the resistance R into the voltage E so let's just get that straight down here E is voltage current resistance so if I want to find the current through the circuit all I have to do is divide the resistance of the circuit into the voltage applied across the circuit that gives me the amps another good formula to have is power P equals E times I so if we multiply the voltage times the current in the circuit we will get the watts that the circuit is producing at the moment in time okay with that in mind you guys get your paper ready to show you how much power is generated in a coil during the pulse this is the meters resistance of the wires so that's 0 0.06, 0 0.07 we got to subtract from the coil when we measure the resistance of this this is one of my previous test coils right here so we got 0.28 minus 0.07 so we're around 0 0.2 0 0.2 on resistance alright so this is our basic coil gun circuit right here alright so if our coil is 0.2 ohms and we have 450 volts DC we're going to use ohms apple okay E I R we need to find the current so we need to divide that into the voltage so let's do that real quick 450 divided by 0.2 that's going to be 2250 amps that's how much current is going to flow through the coil alright if you want to know how much power that is then you would take the 2250 times the 450 so that's going to come out to 1 million 12,500 watts so that's the power of the pulse in the coil it's about a megawatt so mine fired a little bit less than 450 so it's a little under that so I got six coils and I'm figuring you know almost six megawatts so it's gonna be five point something is what it's gonna come out to so that's how much power is pulsed in the coil believe it or not I mean it's a lot but it's for a very short time okay so I didn't expect this 
coil gun to work as good as it is. So when I first made the sequencer, I designed it out of parts I already had. I didn't want to spend much money. So this is basically the sequencer, and it just plugs into the circuit. So we're going to just take this off, because this is RC time constant. It varies with temperature. For a coil gun, we need a computer. Let's plug this right in. We're going to use Arduino. microcontroller. Okay, so there I plugged the Arduino into the optocoupler board. These guys here fire each of the SCRs right here. And that's to prevent the, the high electromagnetic uh, force from the coils from getting back into the electronics and disturbing electronics with all that noise from these pulses because that's a lot of energy. So I'm going to go over and show you the YAC circuit. It's just simple two stages, they're all the same. Basically what we have here <clears throat> is we charge all the capacitors up in parallel and that's via through these diodes right here. And then when the circuit power supply disconnects from that, <clears throat> these capacitors now each discharge independently of one of another. So here we're looking at 7.5 ohms on each of those. Okay, and I used at least a 63 amp. Let's see, 63, bleh, 63 amp diode. If you use really small plastic diodes in here and this, this value is really low, these will explode in your face. So be careful when you're working on a circuit like this. I'm going to explain the hazards. Because we have 450 volts here. Alright? So it's a lot of energy. This is a capacitive discharge weapon. Okay, the YAC gets its power from these two battery packs. They're lithium uh, phosphate and goes into this 62 kilohertz converter which I designed myself from my experience in working on nuclear missile power supply systems alright from there it goes into the charge resistor this is about 50 ohms without that it would be virtually dead short to the power supply not good so this just limits the charge just a little bit and that gives us a four second charge time okay this is our capacitor bank right here and you notice these are each of those charging diodes, one on each capacitor right here. Everywhere you see a little white node, that's where all the charge diodes are, the white nodes. And black is obviously ground. Okay, and these resistors are the voltage recovery diode and resistors for the feedback pulse. And I'll show you how that works in a moment. We've got to fire this thing once to get something on the scope to look at. Okay, for SCRs I used... 10 each of these, uh, they're basically 50 amp continuous 500 amp pulse. So it's good for 5,000 amp pulse at 8 milliseconds of time. And that makes them really nice and small, convenient to fit into something, into a case or whatever we got to put this thing into. All right. And that's about it for that right there. That's our chronograph to measure the speed for the hand tech scope over there. All right, let's fire this thing and get something on the scope. Okay, so we're going to load a projectile in the tube. Right. <clears throat> we're going to come over here and turn on the power switch. And the power supply's on. Okay. This is about 12 volts in the capacitor bank. Alright. So we're going to charge this thing up. We're going to show you how fast it charges up. It's kind of hard to even see the lights here. Alright, it's ready to fire. So let's fire it. And we got our pulses on the scope. So let's look at it. 
See, we're about uh, two milliseconds is the first stage, and about 1.2 milliseconds is the second stage in timing variance. And that's the magic how that works. Now you notice that the voltage is going below the A line. You see that right here? That's the negative voltage. After it's done emptying into the coil, it's, that electromagnetic field surrounding the coil is going to snap back around the coil again and collapse. When it does, it's going to create that voltage. That's important right there to let that happen because if you cut that out and just put a straight diode in there without a resistor over here on our circuit, if you don't put that in there, just put straight wire, you'll lose like 25 feet per second on that coil, okay? So that's why you got to have that resistor there. Let that voltage happen, and it's, it's negative in nature. Yes, it is going to charge the capacitor bank up negative, but it's not going to hurt because it only lasts for that amount of time, and that's it. Over here is our speed. If we can look at the shot right now, we can see... Uh, 1.360 milliseconds, but we've got to subtract the 60 microseconds because of the rise time of the diode on the photo detector. So we're actually looking at 1.3 milliseconds per every 4 inches, which comes out to about 256 feet per second. Okay, so we'll take 250 right now, but it's running at 256 feet per second on that shot. Alright, and the voltage in the capacitor bank has recovered up to about 9.4 volts okay so on the chronograph <coughs> excuse me I measured these to 4 inches alright so then here's the formula So we got 256 feet per second as we got on that shot. And so there's uh, times 3 is uh, 4812 to get to a foot and divide it into the 1, that's how you get to that. So <clears throat> it's basically about 4 milliseconds a foot. Basically is what that would be. Yeah. Alright. Okay, so that's the verification on that right there. Here's the three projectiles I shoot. That one's about almost 11 grams. Okay. This one right here. Then point two two. That one there. Ten point eighty. This is like a cool website to go to. So you put in the mass of your projectile and the velocity and the specifications here and then it comes out with uh, the energy on it. So look we have 34 joules and that's for our biggest projectile 25 foot pounds so it's got 25 pounds of recoil on the gun and this ain't no laughing matter here this is some power here this is dangerous a little bit here if you get hit with this you gotta be careful So we're going to test fire this into some objects now, some targets. Uh, I just want to show you that this is an optical-less coil gun. There's no optics between the coils. And someone was asking me, how do I know when to fire the next coil? That's because there's actually no calculation in building one of these. You basically got to have an oscilloscope to figure it out, to help guide you through your way. Um, what I used is basically two milliseconds. By the time two milliseconds is done the the projectile was supposed to be entering the next coil so it starts here like this and then two milliseconds later it should be about right here okay so but if you look on the timing you'll see there's a little bit of a uh, lag here you see that lag time Got to allow a little bit of time for the projectile to get into the into the tube. So basically, that's how it works. We know when to fire the next coil when this capacitor bank is discharged into the coil. When it's finished, we have to fire the next one. You know, plus a little bit of timing onto it to uh, get the best speed. 
and so that's how it works from one to another when this one's finished it should be about there and then this one will allow it to get in then it'll fire so it's best this way actually that's how I got this much speed out of it I think really um, because I'm not wasting any room in between here it's all basically 12 inches of uh, magnetic tube on that so alright so we're gonna fire this add some things here now okay okay for the first test shot I got four cans I'm going to use this projectile right here. Oops. Oh, there we go. Okay. Charge. Fire. Dang. Yep, all the way through. Every can. There's the bullet over here. There's the bullet. Okay, one, two, three, four. And th these aren't these aren't thin aluminum cans. These are thicker, heavier duty. So, half inch plywood. Use this guy right here. Charge. Fire. Five eighths pine. Let's run this test again with this, the lightest one, the smallest tip. Okay, load it in, charge, fire. All shots were at 256 feet per second, every one. I wish this thing would focus better, but there it is. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna prove or disprove some myths. Somebody on the internet said shooting ferrite was was really good to shoot ferrite. So I have it right here. No one shot ferrite and videotaped it. I'm the only one to do this. So we're here, we're going to shoot some ferrite. Okay, so we're going to load the ferrite in. Let's see. All right, let's see. I'm going to catch it in the rag because we don't want it to shatter and, and get into our face or anything. Charge. We'll, we'll look at the speed on this shot. There it is. Look at the speed on the shot. Look at that. It's absolutely terrible. <laughs> it's way slow. Way slow. So shooting ferrite is no good. Actually what I'm shooting is what somebody said not to shoot. They said not to shoot hardened steel. But this is performing the best so far at the moment. So. So there's there's one hole in it here. Just want to show you that from a previous time. 
So we're going to use that bit right there. Here we go. Load. Charge. Fire. Wow. It's a better hit than the last time. That's because the last time, this is not, is using the RC constant sequencer. And this is using the computer, which uh, is, is accurate down to three microseconds. Wow, pretty good, pretty good. The speed on that shot, 256 feet per second. <clears throat> Every shot, look at this, this tip here, let me see. Man, it, there's no damage at all to this thing. Yeah. Punch a hole in steel. It's, it's it's like brand new still. It's hard to see kind of, but you can see enough maybe. It's awesome. Like this video, and I'll give you a circuit how to build that power supply right here. This thing is awesome. That's what the coil gun community needs. It needs a power supply. <clears throat> Probably the last question is uh, the efficiency. So I have uh, 43 200 microfarad capacitors. So that's 8,600 microfarads. So this is the joule storage right here is 870.75. <clears throat> so the efficiency is going to be 100 divided by 870.5 times 34 joule output as we measured before, 3.90 percent efficient. So let's discuss the reverse voltage recovery system. It actually doesn't recover really much. It's actually just controlling it and then just snubbing it and removing it from the capacitors. So when the capacitors are first charged up, we have positive and negative voltage. When the SCR is fired, the current flow is in this direction. Okay. Until the capacitor empties. When the capacitor empties, then the magnetic field will collapse on this coil, reversing the polarity of it. So this being negative at first, where current is going in, and positive where current's coming out, it will now reverse and become negative here and positive. And the current flow actually never stops flowing as it crosses the zero line on the scope. It's just going negative, and it continues to flow in this direction charging the capacitors in a backwards position up to a point of about 200 volts. Then at that point when the magnetic field is done this diode is going to conduct and take that energy out of the capacitors and feed it back this way conduct this diode through this resistor to control the discharge rate and basically shunt that voltage down to zero out of the capacitors because it's negative we don't want it to stay in there so we're not really recovering any energy to use however after the shot sequence is completed the capacitor will bounce back with some voltage basically just because it's been charged up so hard and when it's discharged so quick it still has dielectric inertia in it so then it kind of recovers up to about maybe 12-15 volts Okay, and that's that on the recovery system. So if you notice that each stage the capacitance gets less and less and less because that's how it has to work to make it work good, to tune it. Otherwise you'll just be slowing the projectile down over here if you put the pulse width too long. I think when I did this before I had instead of let's see 600 microfarads I think I only had 300 there. So that'll get it into the 4% range. So I'm going to have to try that with the computer and see what that does because that shot wasn't uh, done before. So 
All right, I guess I've answered everybody's question. All projectiles shot at 256 feet per second, no matter what their weight, except for the ferrite. That thing shot terrible. Okay, so I guess I'm done, man. I hope I answered all your questions. If you got any comments, please leave them for me. Right, thank you for watching the video.